Can everyone hear us? Give me a thumbs up. Perfect. Awesome. We'll begin with the opening statement from Coach and then take questions after. So raise your hands, please. Yeah, it's a big uh, stretch here for us with Tennessee and Auburn back to back. I mean, those are two of the top teams in the SEC. If we're going to have any chance to win the SEC, we got to play well here in these two games. So it's not easy to win at Tennessee. I think they've only lost five times at home in the last four years. So it's a tough place to play. They're uh, a very good team, one of the best teams in the country. And we, um, you know, we're both playing for conference championship. They, you know, they got one loss and we don't have a loss and Auburn's undefeated as well. So we, uh, we're going to have to play well. You know, they, they do a good job turning people over. They're super physical. We didn't handle it well up there last year. We only, we only had two losses in league last year. And uh, this was one of the two was up there. So it's, um, our guys, and we've had an issue with turnover. So we've got to do a good job taking care of the ball a lot better than what we have in the past. And then we're going to have to obviously guard Dalton Connect. I mean, he's he's put on quite a show here these last three games. I think he's had three straight games, so over 28, which scoring at a high level and back-to-back 35-point games or 35-plus. So, you know, the issue is if you focus your entire defense on him, they've got other really good players. I mean, Vescovy's one of the best guards in the league. He's been here. Ziegler's one of the best guards in the league. He's been there. You know, a dude can score it. Uh, James has played well. They, they've got multiple guys that can score it. So it's, it's hard to just completely focus on Dalton, but you've got to focus on him because he's scoring the ball at a high clip right now. Start with Charlie. Yeah, hey, Coach. You just mentioned um, after the game how Mark tweaked his ankle. Just how's he progressed this week? How is he looking for tomorrow? You know what? He's been able to fully practice these last two days. Yeah, you know, he's not 100%, but he's he, – he's, we haven't held him out of anything in practice. So he, he'll, he'll be he'll, – it's progressing every day, so hopefully he's better tomorrow than he was today. But he, he – He's a leading scorer in the SEC, so we're, we're going to play him if he's sitting anywhere close to 100%. Nick Kelly. Yeah, hey, Nate. Uh, Zakai Ziegler has, I think, one of the top assist rates in the country. Uh, what about his ability to distribute the ball makes them effective and helps them out? I mean, so fast. You know, he, he gets in the paint so so frequently, and when he gets in there, he draws a crowd, and then he's unselfish and makes the right reads and kicks it out or drops it off. So, you know, he's been causing defenses in this league problems since he got there as a freshman. So, you know, it's no surprise that he's at the top this year, but we got to do a good job trying to keep the ball out of the lane with him. He's just, I mean, he's a little water boy. He, he's quick. He gets it and he goes in transition. He's made them a lot faster team since he's gotten there. And, you know, they put shooting around him and makes it even better for him with the way that they've been able to space the floor a little bit more with their shooting now. Tony? Yeah, Nate, you keep on playing these top 10 games uh, away from Coleman Coliseum. What did you think you learned from the, the first three uh, last month that, that will kind of help you fare better in bowling? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, the biggest thing we learned in those three was that we were right there with all three of them for large parts of the game. Uh, every, every one of those three games, we had at least a six-point lead in the second half and 75% or greater – winning percentage, you know, how they do that, whatever. And we, we coughed them up. So, you know, for fortune now, Tennessee's, we, we played them away from Coleman, those other three, only one of those was a true road game. So this would be a true road game in conference. It's a little bit different environment. So, you know, if we were fortunate enough to get a lead, hopefully our guys have learned a little better how to hold it, and then they're going to know they're going to gonna have to compete for 40 minutes. You know, you can't come out. It could go the other way. You know, we might be down big and have to come back, or if you're up big, or if it's just tight within a couple of possessions the whole game, you got to play 40. You can't play 28 or 32 and, and win these big games. It's got to take a, a full effort from everybody for 40 minutes. Johnny. <laughs> Hey, Nate, I remember talking to you last year, and Mark Sears, you said, kind of overexceeded your expectations as a scorer. Now he's leading the SEC in scoring. Uh, as you head deeper in a conference play this year, how confident are you 
that you can make sure that you keep his scoring consistent. Obviously, he might not be the highest score in the SEC, but, you know, we kind of took a dip last year as a score in a SEC play. Yeah, I, you know what? He's been through a year of SEC play. I think he feels more comfortable. And I, I think, you know, he is leading the, the league in scoring, but we're also moving the ball around and sharing it pretty well, too. So, you know, kind of like I said with Dalton, it's hard to just focus on him because they got a lot, a lot of other really good players. We, we've got the same issue. You know, if you want to put all of your focus on Mark, Aaron can go get you 20 any given night. Ryland can get you 20. Wright can get you 20. You know, Grant can go score. I, we've got other options that people have to focus on that are actually playing pretty well right now. You look at how Wright and uh, Ryland have been here lately that I think it's hard for a team to just completely focus on Sears. And I think the better he passes it and makes the reads and helps his teammates get better, it's going to open it up for him more because they really can't put two guys on him all the time when, when he's able to get rid of it and and make, make them pay for trying to trap him. You know, he, he gets stuck in some traps against Missouri. I, I think, you know, if teams start to do that, I think he'll be better. I think he realizes he's got to get the ball out of his hands a little bit quicker on some of that type of stuff. Jack. Hey, Nate, I know you've mentioned uh, like Mo Diabate and, and kind of what he's brought, but what have you noticed just with this strong start in conference play, maybe in practice with this uh, with this team just giving more effort here and 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 working harder to try and, uh, try and make these blue-collar plays? Yeah, I, obviously Diabate plays really hard. That's why he's getting minutes because we needed to – infuse some blue collar toughness you know and he's he's about all that so you know I think some other guys are picking it up from him you know some other guys are starting to play uh harder as well I think you know Estrada has been playing really hard tons of blue collar stuff so you know and our bigs are our bigs have typically played pretty hard they just fouled too much doing it I think they're learning how to guard without fouling, and Grant's been able to be a little bit better. You know, Grant doesn't foul as much. We could play him. So, you know, I, I think we're getting a little deeper with where we're able to go, and if guys aren't going to play tough and hard and give us max effort, they're just not going to be able to play. Charlie. Yeah, because you mentioned Ryland earlier. Uh, you, you've also talked about his defense this year, but he's come along offensively. Just how important is he, the way he's playing, to keep this up for you guys to see success? Yeah, I think in his last uh, six games, he's averaging almost 15 points and five rebounds over two assists. So he, he's he's really talented offensively. You know, guys go through struggles. I mean, even last year, Brandon Miller, I thought was the be his best perimeter player in college basketball for sure. But, you know, he struggled a little bit at the end of the year. It's just – it's typical. You look at the best players in the country, they go through slumps. And Rhode Island wasn't playing up to his potential early, you know, in the year. Like on offense, we – we you know, we know how good a shooter he can be and how, how well he shoots it in practice at times. And it's nice to see him start playing well in games. And he's definitely on an upswing, getting more confidence on, on, in his offensive game. And, you know, while that's happening, his, his defense – can't slip, and I don't think it has, and I think he realizes that. So, uh, you know, our, our challenge to him is to be the best two-way wing in the league, and he's got a chance to be that. Two more, Ben. Hey, Nate, I, I wanted to ask you about two Tennessee players in your preparation. Just what impresses you most about Dalton and, and what he's been able to do this year? And you've obviously gone up against Janus, Jonas Adu for, for three years now. Just how have you seen him kind of elevate what Tennessee's able to do on the offensive end? Yeah, I mean, Dalton, shoot, I mean, he's got size, he's athletic, he shoots it really well, so you got to be right there on the catch, otherwise he's getting it all, he gets a shot off quick and can shoot over the top of smaller guards. You know, and they, they've done a good job. I mean, they're playing a little bit, they're, they're some similar stuff on offense, but they're, you know, playing to uh, Dalton's strengths a little bit, and he's coming off, you know, some of those wide pins and, some floppies and they're putting him in ball screens where he's handling the ball screens with his size. So they're using him in a lot of different ways. And they even post him a little bit because he's, he's got size and, you know, teams would want to guard him with a guard the way he shoots it. But, you know, if you're six, seven posts that make, that makes, do you want to switch? Do you want to put your small guards on him? You know, they, they, they put you in a quandary. I think coach Barnes done a really good job utilizing what 
Dalton does well. And then talking about Jonas, you know, I, he's just progressively gotten better every year. I mean, he's gotten I, he looks like he's more athletic, moves better. You know, he, he's able to knock down, you know, kind of that mid-range shot while he's also, you know, can score to the post. He deep seals you. He's, uh, his passing's improved. I mean, he's, he, he helps them a lot. And he's got, he's big. He's got a real size in there. So, I mean, they're, you know, one of the few teams in the, in the country that are really good on offense and defense. I mean, they're, well, we got to get our defense better. They're number two in the country in defense. And if they're not top 20 in offense or they're borderline top 20 in offense, and he's a big part of both of that, you know, particularly on defense, he kind of anchors the whole deal back there. And then on offense, he's gotten a lot better and, and he's playing well for him. Last one, Jack. And Nate, I know Mo only got, I think, six minutes against Missouri. How's he been uh, progressing with, with his recovery? Yeah, I mean, he's just uh, with the injury, he can't really practice. We're trying to save him for games, so he he didn't he hasn't practiced much. So it, it's it's a little bit harder when you can't practice to be in sync with everybody else for the games. But you know, he's kind of available as front court depth when we need it. You know, he's going to play hard. Just he's got this injury that we kind of have to deal with the rest of the year. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everyone. All right, thanks, guys.